give me a wave with the intro waves, and then you can unmute me. Getting some strange from somewhere, and I don't know where it is. I think that was, yeah, that was why, because the, the stream was up. I forgot I left the link on. Okay. So should I do it again? If you want. I want to. Okay. Like, are you going to say something? Yeah, again? I can say, I can say something because initially. Definitely. I'll do it for, for both streams. Okay. All right. So I'm ready? Yep. All right. Yeah, just give me the... All right, so uh, welcome. My name is Jeremy. I'm an educator here at Copernic. And uh, we started with some technical difficulties with our first stream, but now I think we're ready to go. Uh, we're going to see if uh, we can stream some uh, VR content. Uh, today we're going to look at a uh, planetarium program called Space Engine. And I'm going to tour around the solar system and the galaxy uh, through this VR headset. We have it connected up to our uh, computer over here and it's going to uh, stream what I'm seeing inside, inside the headset. So you can, of course, go view that on YouTube, on our channel. That's how we're streaming from here. Uh, and I'm going to use these motion controllers to move around the world. And of course, this is all part of our Entering a Virtual Universe Summer Camp that we're uh, trying out this week. And you can view that on, uh, view some of the content we show off to the students on YouTube um, as part of the camp. So uh, let's, one other thing we need to do is just bring up the video feed of Space Engine so I can always check in on it when necessary. And you can switch over to Game Capture. And let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to jump into VR. This is, this is my marked off VR zone. Um, and that and actually represents my safe virtual barrier. Because when I step out of that zone, the headset will tell me that I've stepped out and I can uh, know that I'm moving into uncharted territory and I won't know where I am. Uh, but the other cool thing is the cameras in the headset will turn on and, and uh, show me the real world um, in case there's uh, hazards around that I might trip over. So otherwise, though, if I stay in this space, I'm fine. OK, so yeah, we're going to get started on our, our uh, viewing uh, the universe in this space engine. 
So if I look around here, I can see the stars, the constellations, the Milky Way, and right behind me here is the sun. And I can, with my controllers, I can move the sky around. But I would like to go uh, visit some uh, planets in the solar system. So I'm going to bring up my uh, menu here. And one, I'm going to look at the orbits of the planets. Because I'm right next to the sun, I can see all the orbits of the planets and the dwarf planets in the solar system. They represent these little green lines. So here's a planet. What's this one? Ah, Mercury. Well, let's go visit Mercury. So I'm going to press the Go To button. And we are traveling to Mercury. Oh, there it is. Right in front of me here. And I can move through time. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the time scale here. It's moving up 300 times, and we are in orbit uh, around the sun. And Mercury actually has a very slow rotation, so we have to go all the way to 10,000 times to see the rotation of Mercury. Very slow. It's almost locked. Its face is it's al it's almost locked to uh, the sun. Uh, just like the moon's face is locked to the, the Earth. Um, so we only ever get to see one side of the moon. Uh, it's not quite the case uh, for Mercury, but uh, it is a very slow rotation. Uh, very quick revolution around the sun, though. I think it's on uh, around 68 days. It moves really fast around the sun. Okay, so that's Mercury. Let's see what else we can find here. Turn the orbits back on because that's a good way to explore. And you can see a lot of the planetary orbits, most of them, in fact, all the main planets, fall along this same plane. So they're all in there. Uh, so, you know what? Let's try another search method. Here we go. So, this is the solar system search method that I'm seeing here. And I can go to Venus. Venus. Uh, let's go. Let's see. Where is it? Where did it select it? That's off. Uh, uh, it's around here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. Next, uh, near the sun. It's further out from the sun, but it's uh, further away from Mercury here, so that's why it appears. Uh, See where it is in the sky. Let's see, is it traveling? Yep, we're traveling now to Venus. Turn this stuff off. Five seconds, almost there. Here is Venus. And uh, we don't get to see many of the features of Venus uh, because it's a very cloudy planet. So the entire surface uh, is covered with clouds, very thick clouds too. Um, and you can see, you can barely see it's rotating there as we uh, uh, increase the, the time um, because uh, it's just clouds. Uh, the surface is very interesting, uh, but we can't see through it, at least with visible in the visible light spectrum, we can't look at the surface uh, because uh, those cloud layers are too thick. Those clouds trap a lot of the heat that comes from the sun, and uh, you actually end up with a runaway greenhouse effect uh, and to a crazy level on Venus, and it ends up being the hottest uh, planet in the solar system at its surface uh, because of that cloud layer. All right, look at that. We can see, uh, uh, I think, yeah, this is Orion over here. Yep, there's Betelgeuse. Looks a little, little funky, but it might be just because of the way we're looking at this uh, world, uh, this spherical view of, of space. Looks like there's a couple of binary, a binary star system down there, or maybe those are planets. Let's see, maybe planets. Oh yeah, it's Earth and the Moon. Oh, silly, silly me. 
Uh, so yeah, there's Earth and the Moon, and that's where we actually want to go next anyway, so I'm glad I spotted those. You can see some of the other planets out there. Well, let's go to the Earth. There we go. So here is planet Earth. And move my view around here. There used to be a way that you could orbit around the object so you can see the other parts, but I'm not getting that to happen, so maybe we won't do that today. But we can look at the moon. There we go. Here's the moon. And this looks like mostly the face that, this is Crater Tycho up here. Right up there. And Crater Copernicus is right over here. This, I think this is Copernicus right there. And these are the, the dark spots on the moon are the mare. Uh, those are like the seas. They were once lava lakes, pools of lava all across the moon that eventually cooled down. Out here in the stars, we can see the Pleiades star cluster. And here's Orion from another perspective again. Uh, the Pleiades star cluster is has many names. It's also known as the Seven Sisters, uh, also known as Subaru. It's right next to the constellation uh, Taurus, Taurus the bull. There's the horns of the bull. There's the Earth. You can see the sunlight glaring off its surface. All right, and the next planet is Mars. Uh, I want to go to Mars, so we're going to go press this button. Like to go back. There we go. And Mars. Where is Mars? We're going. Looks like we're going there, wherever it is. Ah, there it is. Ah, here's Mars. There's the volcanoes across its surface. You can see this the southern polar ice cap here. I think this is Val uh, Marineris. Uh, which is the big canyon across uh, Mar the Martian surface, bigger than the Grand Canyon, and uh, also uh, bigger than the United States. It's actually about this, the width of the United States. It's a massive crack in the Martian surface. Okay, now let's go to the outer planets. We'll go to, that's a dwarf planet, that's Ceres. We'll go to Jupiter next. And we will fly there. And here you can see all the moons of Jupiter. I think we can even fly to one. I kind of want to go to Io, so let me see if I can find Io. That's smaller moon, that is, Europa, maybe Callisto, maybe Io, this one out here, oh, that's a star, that's Antares, that's part of the Scorpius uh, constellation, you can see the tail of the scorpion out this way, and the claws come out this way. Uh, let me see if I can fly around a little bit, because I haven't shown you the flight mechanic yet. I'll fly around Jupiter here. Fly through its moons, and we'll see if we can find Io. Europa. Callisto. Where is Io? Ah, there's Io. There we go. Io is really interesting because it has 
volcanoes all across its surface. Look at that. The moons of Jupiter are very interesting. They all are very unique worlds. Some of them are icy surfaces uh, with maybe liquid water oceans underneath them. If we speed up the time scale here, you can see there goes, there's Jupiter sort of orbiting around me right now. Kind of cool. You can see the moons. I just wanted to center Jupiter on my view a little better. But you can see the moons orbiting around Jupiter on this uh, faster time scale. And again, there's Orion right up there. Constellations don't change much as you travel around the solar system because uh, uh, we're, we're, the spaces, the stars are very far away. Uh, so if you're just in the solar system where everything's relatively close to each other, uh, the stars won't change much. Okay, let's keep going. I know everyone's, or many people's, favorite planet is Saturn. Let's go to Saturn. Still traveling, let's go a little faster. There we go, whoa, look at how many moons. Lots of moons around Saturn. Uh, so, we can also travel through time here as well, as we were doing before. We can see the moon's orbit. Let's fly around a little bit. Gotta increase my speed. Seem to be moving much yet. There we go. Fly through the moons. As again, time has is moving much faster than it would otherwise, but it makes it for a very dynamic flyby of Saturn's rings. You notice when you look at the edge of the rings, they almost are pretty much disappear because they're not thick. They're really thin but it is a very large disk. You can see the sunlight passing through the rings there. Really cool to see. All right, last two planets. We're gonna say the Greek pronunciation of this planet is Aranus. Where is it? Ah, there it is. On the other opposite side of the sun, we still have the time scale up much faster. So you can see the many moons of Uranus. And you can just about see the ring system. Let's see if we come to the other side. Maybe if we look through the sun. We'll see them a little more clearly. You can just about see the disk, though. Much thinner than Saturn's, but... Let's go this way. Now, even looking with the sun, the rings don't show up that... Yeah, it's just you can just about see the wispy rings there. All right, last planet. And maybe we'll go to Pluto too, just for fun. Because I think they've modeled the with Pluto with the new pictures of the planet, so we can see what that looks like. All right, Neptune, the other really blue planet. And it has quite a few moons as well, orbiting around there. All 
right? Pluto. Pluto is almost like a binary planet system because it has a, a large moon called Charon. Here's Pluto. And some data of Pluto is missing. They only were able to get uh, one uh, face of it fully mapped. So some of it's going to be kind of blurry. If we zoom through time here, maybe we can get to the clearer side again. Yeah, some of it's coming through. There we go. Yeah, right in here, this is where the heart of Pluto resides. When they took, uh, one of the first features they saw on Pluto was this big heart-like shape on the surface of the planet. Um, they saw that very early on in the New Horizons mission. Okay. Good. Now there was something we looked at last week in the Space and Stars camp, but we didn't do that in VR, so I would like to give it a try here before we end the show. And that is travel to the black hole Sagittarius. So Victor, if you could in the box there type in, just put in SAG. If you can, uh, I'm just realizing that you might not be able to super see the screen well, but it might show up on the uh, Streamlabs speed too, your mouse cursor. Well, actually, maybe I can. Or maybe I can click on it now. Okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Sorry, I found a big. You might. I think you just have the backspace to get rid of it. What do you want me to type? So just put in S A G. And there it is. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Here we are, Sagittarius A, the black hole at the center of our uh, our solar, uh, or no, sorry, of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Not at the center of our solar system, don't worry, it's not gonna hurt us. Uh, and we can see that there's these two jets here coming out. And if we, can we zoom in? Well, we can fly into it. Where's the uh, speed monitor, there it is. Gotta wait for our speed to kick up there. Because there's a lot of space in space. So you really gotta be moving pretty fast. And in this case, faster than the speed of light to actually notice some significant movement. Whoa! Do you see it? There's the black hole. Try getting a little bit closer. Go a little bit slower this time. There's the black hole. Don't fly into it. You see how it warps space as we pass by? This disk here is the accretion disk of all that star and dusty and planetary material getting swept up into a spiral. And uh, we'll try one more time passing through it here. Whoa, dodged it again. So we didn't quite reach the event horizon, which is the point of no return for black holes. 
that's Sagittarius A. And there's a lot more to explore in Space, space Engine, and maybe we'll do that another day, um, whether that be in VR or just exploring on the computer screen. Uh, there's a lot to see uh, in the universe out there, and a program like this gives you full access to it. Oh, it's so bright. All right, well, thank you all for uh, joining me for the, our first uh, VR demonstration uh, of the week. Uh, we'll do a few more uh, tomorrow and, and Friday. Uh, we have a few other ones like walking aboard the International Space Station. And maybe we'll give the uh, Star Wars game a try too. Um, play around with lightsabers and whatnot. All right, so maybe we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.